Okay, so the bike's not been started for well, probably five days. Yeah, stone cold, it's been in my shed. Um, fuel on reserve because there's only a small amount in the tank. Don't think we want to transport too much fuel in there. Uh, I'm going to kick it over because I always prefer to kick it over rather than electric start, but we'll prove the starter works. So, yeah, um, I've never really mastered a technique. Uh, I'm going to put it on full choke to start with for a few kicks. Start it on the electric. So to release the seat, it is the second Allen key bolt under there. Uh, it's just one bolt uh, screws into the underside of the seat. So I'll uh, I'll whip that out and then uh, I'll show you what's underneath. So I'll, I'll give you an Allen key, a little shorty Allen key anyway, to get started. And then just uh, unscrew it out. And then underneath the seat, uh, there is just a spacer. So keep hold of that. It's not really that important. It's just uh, to save you over tightening and pulling the seat down too far. Um, anyway, that's that's the method. So underneath the seat, yeah, it's just one fixing screw hole there. So, it's the lithium battery. You can press the test button. I've just charged it up anyway, but I do suggest you get a, a lithium charger. Um, you can't charge it with a normal charger. So the wiring is pretty straightforward. It's got the original loom. Uh, obviously I've put new indicators and lights in there, their LED. Um, I have labelled things, um, but it's fairly logical. If you've got the um, the wiring diagram that I've got your coloured copy of, then um, you can see where everything goes. That's uh, the new uh, rectifier uh, regulator plug in there. There's only one fuse. That's uh, had a new fuse in there. The part of the modification was to flatten out the tank because the tanks are on a bit of a rakish angle on the CL350 looks, looks terrible so to get it looking good I've made a spacer under here so the tank is screwed down that's a rubber uh, there just to stop the vibration so if you, you ever take the tank off take that screw out um, and don't lose the spacer 
So being a perfectionist, um, obviously I've spent a lot of hours on this bike. Um, and the only thing that, uh, um, yeah, it's just absolutely not perfect on here is this little bit of um, paint lift in here. Um, it just got damaged. In fact, I think the previous um, paint had been damaged. When you take the tank off, you've got to be very careful when you shunt it forward that you don't crash into the top yoke. So that's kind of what's happened there and the paint has just lifted. I mean, I've put this rubber around here to protect that so that won't happen again. Um, I didn't want to hide this, it is shown on the videos. Um, you could put a sticker over that. I mean, I, I haven't data tagged this bike, but I suggest um, you data tag it and you could put the nice sort of silver data tag sticker on there if you if you wish to do so. So the calves were completely stripped and the diaphragms weren't replaced, but they were fully checked and they were in perfect order. Everything else inside those carburetors was changed, and that was the kit from Common Motor uh, USA. That um, yeah, it was well worth the money. And as I sort of said in my notes that I've written, yeah, please refer to them on YouTube because uh, they've got a tutorial on everything to do with these bikes. So the jet in is completely standard because uh, um, I'm running the standard air filters. Um, I personally I like the side covers. I don't like um removing all the battery box and I don't, I don't see the obsession with seeing through the bike i don't think it enhances the look um so anyway you obviously feel the same because you bought the bike so um so yeah it's all completely standard um here the petcock that was a replica from david silver spares but the stamping was back to front anyway i tackled them about it and uh, they weren't really forthcoming so anyway the solution I think I ended up spinning it upside down so um, it just that's why it reads upside down so stop is stop on is vertically upwards and then reserve and the reserve is up to probably up to about this level here um, it's running on reserve now there's, there's a minimum amount of fuel in there um, because I don't like the fuel sat around if I'm not using it because it basically doesn't do the tank or carbs or anything any good so um, anyway I've been running this bike regularly I'm gonna run it around the block a little bit later just to run some fuel for it so um, yeah don't leave it for weeks on end without starting because um, yeah apparently you can get problems so I haven't you know I haven't ridden it a huge amount at all obviously during the winter um, but um, yeah with a, with a few kicks and a bit of puff after it hasn't been running for sort of six weeks it yeah it fires up again So that's where the oil filter is behind there. It's like a centrifugal aluminium oil filter. It's not replaceable. You just take it out and clean it out. But as so I've done all that, uh, I don't think that had been done for a long time, but actually it wasn't that mucky. Um, the oil's been changed about 50 miles ago. I put a new gasket on here. Um, so, you know, really it's good to go. You shouldn't, shouldn't have to do anything. Yeah, I had all the brakes stripped down and lubed and checked. Um, yeah, there's almost no sign of wear on the on the, the shoes. So um, again, depending on how much you're going to ride this bike, uh, you shouldn't really need to be thinking about replacing those. Um, the shocks, again, these were from Common Moto. Turns out, I mean, these are heavy duty shocks. Now I'm only ten and a half stone. And it's 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 a very firm ride. So, um, you know, if you find it uncomfortable, uh, I bought YSS shocks from the UK from WeMoto. I think they were about 110, 115 quid. That's what I put on my CB 350. Um, so, you may decide that that might be a good investment to do that i mean these are these are brand new they've done what 350 400 miles on those so um you could sell those as heavy duty um shocks but uh yeah i'm told by komamoto which these are their own brand that they yeah are suitable for the 550 as well which is obviously a much heavier bike So putting the seat back on, two prongs sit just under 
that tongue on the um, tank. Um, screw have held in position, held by a little rubber washer so it doesn't drop out. And obviously we're trying to make that up with that. So can be a little bit fiddly, but there should be no gap there. So that's obvious when it's in the right position, it sits nicely on the frame loop. And then you can often see, just lift the seat. See where we're at. You get so far, finger tight, and then Allen key. It's quite a shorty Allen key. And then just uh, wind it, really until there's no movement on the seat. You can feel when it starts to resist, but don't keep winding and winding because obviously you'll just pull down the, um, the fiberglass seat seat pan. So that's that's nice and tight. Yeah, that's solid. Okay, let's um, start her up again. I think it was about an hour since I started it, so let's do it on the button. So. Uh, I'm going to stick it over to reserve, reserve, on, make sure we're in neutral. Yeah, obviously, this time of year it certainly doesn't need a choke once it's been running for a little bit. I mean, they, those pipes are pretty cold actually, so um, let's have a go on the kicker as well. Make sure to turn the uh, ignition cut off switch back on again. Always turn the fuel off when you're done. Although I've never had fuel leaks, so um, but I think it's just a Good, good idea to do that. So at some point you will need to take the uh, the exhaust off and you need to take the mufflers off first. Now they are hanging on this uh, bracket that I've welded onto the subframe. You need to undo just the bottom bolt. It's a nylock so uh, you need to get a spanner on that and uh, yeah you can't do it by hand um, because it's uh, obviously it's an anti-vibration nut um, and then you can slide both the mufflers off and they are fixed together with a bracket between them so you don't need to take that apart you can take them on and off um, leaving them attached so you just literally poke it back through again but I do suggest you take a photo showing where the spacers are. It's not absolutely precise, but uh, I've got a, a sort of rubber washer and two washers this side, um, and then a, a washer on the inside down here, and then a washer on the outside. So it's just, because it's all a little bit tight, I've put a little bit of red um, tape here just to stop it damaging. Um, with any vibration so so if you need to take the air cleaner off this side to get this panel off you've obviously got to take take the exhaust off um, the rest of it is just just held on with the um, the nuts on the studs and I've had this off uh, more times than I can uh, remember really it's just um, yeah so it all comes apart incredibly easy so um, yeah the pipes under here are not in bad condition um, yeah, but I don't think you want to leave them exposed. This titanium wraps um, definitely finishes off nicely. Yeah, if you're wondering what this is, that's just a little trick really. It's just a bit of aluminium kitchen foil just to tighten up that on the splines. Just, just makes it a little bit tighter. Um, obviously, you know, it's a 48-year-old bike, um, but I've not had any issues with that at all. It, it's slipping. Obviously, I've replaced all the all the screws with stainless um, where I can um, so yeah there's nothing nothing to worry about there but if you do take it off I suggest you do put some foil back on again